I was an engineer and in 2008 lost my job due to the economic collapse. Jobs were scarce. I didn't know where to turn to get help updating my resume. Online services and coaches charge hundreds, even thousands of dollars. I took matters into my own hands and learned how to craft interview winning resumes. Shortly later, I landed a job with a Fortune 500 company. I've helped many achieve similar success. Now I share my tips to create interview winning resumes, interviewing excellence, and high performance growth strategies on my podcast, Career Growth Made Easy. Hey there, and welcome back to the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Craig Ansell. We are just rolling along with episodes, knocking out number 133 today. We're going to go somewhere special. Today's show is called Picking Up Details. Much of life is about seeking details, seeking out clarification and understanding. But in order to do this, you need to be present I believe, present in the moment. In fact, I have a past episode, back to number 37, titled, Don't Just Exist, Be Present. I say this because nearly 90% of our communication is nonverbal. You know, with our spoken word, it's not just our word choice, but it's also the words we choose not to say. That's right. We have options each and every day with the words we choose to speak and those we don't. That's a little food for thought, I think. Now, if you're an extrovert like me, it may be difficult to contain yourself when opportunities come up and you might want to get involved or speak up right away. Add to that, if you're an extrovert with high energy, this makes it twice as hard. (laughs) You may always want to be involved, always help out, be engaged. Sometimes you feel like you're missing things if you're not part of almost every activity around you. However, we may sometimes jump too fast, speak just a little too quickly when we get engaged. We need to use pauses, pauses in our day to help facilitate more intelligent choices. That goes for you and that definitely goes for me. Pausing before responding can help us better understand the situation and, in many times, the context of the situation in hand. Pausing before responding can help us in a number of areas, and one of those is conversations. Talking about conversations, you often have those during interviews, a critical area. But in order to pick up the details, I've become what I would say Andy Andrews, Both speaker and author has titled one of his recent books, The Noticer. (laughs) After listening to today's show, perhaps take a little challenge of mine. Pause before speaking. Absorb your environment just a little bit more. And identify things that you may have overlooked in the past. If you're in a repeat environment, try to find something new each time you visit that environment. Just observe, look around casually, and see things that are new to you or that you've taken for granted and not noticed before. For conversations, I suggest seek first to understand, then to respond. Listen for those little details that can somehow go overlooked in conversations. Vocal tone. Word choice. The level of detail or lack thereof. Were certain words accentuated during the conversation? Did certain words get spoken more loudly than others? Did you notice any body movements with certain parts of the discussion? Or were there certain body movements when certain words were spoken? These types of details can help us during conversations and especially during interviews. Since you're listening to Career Growth Made Easy, we should pause here and talk a moment about interviews. I recently had the great fortune to speak to over 250 high school students and told them that attention to detail absolutely matters. The detail matters from what you wear to each interview, and this will likely change based on the business and position that you're interviewing for, to picking up on social cues and body language of your interviewers. You know, 
With the recent push from numerous employers to get people back into their buildings rather than work remotely, the push for RTO or return to office is on. That means more in-person meetings, local collaboration, and likely in-person interviews. When I was speaking to these high schoolers recently, we talked about the three main types of interviews, one-on-one, group, and panel, or one-on-many. In each environment, it's important to pick up on those details. For example, when it's one-on-one, you enter the facility, you enter the office, and it's you and another person. They're likely from human resources, could be your hiring manager, or actually your acting manager, the one that you would report to if awarded the job. Attention to detail absolutely matters, picking up on the fine things. That could be something that sets you apart from others. When you enter the room, recognize what's going on around you. Recognize some of the content, perhaps paintings, drawings, writing on the wall. Is there anything in particular that this company designs, supports, or services that you see in the room that you could draw your attention to and possibly the conversation to show that it piqued your interest, it piqued your curiosity. With a group interview, I'll tell you, here's one of the techniques that was recently used when people were out looking for jobs in the fast food restaurant business. You'd go into the restaurant. Unknowingly, there would be a group interview at a booth. The interview likely takes place during rush hours such as lunch or dinner. I think that's to help throw you off and see how you react in loud, busy environments. You would sit with three or four other people in the booth, and then the interviewing manager would pull up a chair to the side of the booth, introduce themselves, and then start with their questions. There's good things and bad things about group interviews. If you're a person that deals with stress or anxiety in a difficult way or is challenged with it, group interviews certainly can ratchet that up a few notches. But then again, the same for one-on-one interviews. It's just you and your employer in a personal environment, in a private environment. But back to the group interviews. One of the questions that was asked was a bit off the wall I heard about from one of the people that it interviewed. They were also one of my students. And they said, Craig, I was asked, if you would be a vehicle, what vehicle would you be? Hmm. That caught me off guard, but after I heard it, I certainly knew why they asked it. So it's a two-part question, and no, I haven't lost my mind, listeners. If you would be a vehicle, what vehicle would you be? Number one, so select the vehicle type. And then number two, why? As people went around the group interview, one answer was given that was, I would be a shiny red Corvette. Okay, I give this person attention to detail because not only did they pick Corvette, they picked the color and the fact that it's shiny. So they're creative as well. They know what they want. But then the why question came, why would you be a shiny red Corvette? And the response was, they're expensive and they go fast. All right. Well, we'll discuss that in a moment, but as the other people went around the table in the group interview and answered that question, one particular answer really blew my mind, and it was the response, I'd like to be a used pickup truck. Huh, that that's really interesting. Why would you select that? Well, the response was, one, it saves money on the purchase, and two, it's multi-use. You can drive your friends around in it because there's a few seats, but it also has a pickup truck flatbed in the back so that you could haul things around if you needed to move things for college when you move out. Or the person then said, if I'm hired at this establishment and you ever need to move materials from one store to another or inventory, I could use my truck to do that with. Now, I think that's a really awesome response. I'll tell you why. Not only was it a low-cost solution, but it showed versatility, but also the person during the interview transformed themselves from the interview into the potential role, suggesting if I was hired here, I could envision myself moving materials from one store to another. So I'll tell you what, that was an incredible answer, and I've learned a lot from discussing that with one of my students, but also learned that the other person that gave the Corvette response was not hired. 
if you're not sure why, I'm going to tell you what my belief is. Number one, she said Corvettes are expensive. And number two, they're fast. Fast can indicate risk, possibly that you would be someone that drives fast or speeds, and expense, meaning you have rich taste. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But if it's a position at a restaurant, fast food, let's say, and you're up against others and there's a base rate of pay, you might have the mentality, you might have the thought that you should be paid more for work that you do because you have richer tastes. So these are psychological-based questions to help you get out of your logic zone and into your emotional zone and kind of daydream, and that shows the kind of person that you are in many of these examples. As I've talked to students over the years, I've heard two other questions that came to mind, and then we'll jump back to today's topic, picking up on details. One of the other questions was, if you would be a superhero, what superhero would you be and why? Here's another one. If you could have superpowers, what superpower would you want and why? Notice this is very important talking about details. It's a two-part question, the what followed by the why. The why starts to explain your psyche, your emotional makeup, the way you see things and think of things. And that lets people uh, help process who you are and who you might be. Should you be on a team? Would you fit in? All right. So from there, we go on to the next topic. Now that we've talked briefly on interviewing. If you know me well, or you've recently talked to my wife, Erin, you know that I love details. In fact, it helps put some of these podcast shows together. I hope it brings you great value. In fact, my brain is constantly on, I would say. I'm at a point in my life where I almost can't stop processing information. I'm constantly scanning my environments and collecting data, kind of like a computer or a robot. Having the fortune to work under several engineering disciplines has allowed me to grow and have the ability to pick up on capturing details, too, in some unique areas. My background is in electrical engineering, but as I've also worked with software, firmware, which is the code on microchips, and even reverse engineering. Like in the movie, The Score, with the lead character that was Robert De Niro, he wanted to gain access to a high-security safe, but he wasn't sure how. People thought it was nearly impossible. Robert De Niro's character replied in the movie, if somebody built it, it can be unbuilt. Meaning, if something can be designed or done for the first time, it can also be undone. My point for today's show is all about how you look at your environment and how you process details. Perhaps you'll pause just for a moment, here and there, and observe something new. Now, The next question will be, what do you do with this new bit of information? How can it help you to be successful? How can it help you, especially if you're one of the few or perhaps the only one that picked up on that bit of information? I would say it depends. It depends on your environment. If it's in an interview situation and you've picked up on a particular fact or detail in the room or potentially about another interviewer, like their tell they gave some information away, You can hold that close and choose to use it at the right time during the conversation or use it not at all. Just kind of keep it there as potential information or ammunition for a more positive conversation. If you're in a work environment and you've picked up on something new for the first time, see if that particular issue, situation, or let's say problem rears its head again. If it does, you'll realize it's possibly a repeat situation and it might be something that the company is unaware of and that something could be done to mitigate it or eliminate it from occurring. If that's the case, potentially you could bring it up to management along with a solution or recommended solutions to solve that problem. The thing though is, given your set of skills and talents, everybody is unique Maybe you are the only one that picked up on that attention to detail. So you might have to be able to reword and explain what you witnessed or what you're seeing in your company or in your office so that you can then bring it to someone's attention, such as a supervisor or manager. And then I would recommend coming up with some solutions as well. It's not good, in my opinion, just to bring up a problem or an issue. It'd be better if you bring that awareness up, number one, showing that you're someone that has a keen eye for detail, but also the fact that you are interested in helping solve it by coming up with at least one solution. 
Now, mind you, your solution may not be implemented by the company. In fact, who you bring up that issue to or that problem may say, what, I think there was reported years ago, we've just kind of got used to it, right? Just because it's done it all the time doesn't mean it's right. Just because that problem or issue has always been there doesn't mean it should remain. So in this case, not only picking up on attention to detail matters, but also how you approach the situation and you try to sell the repair or recovery process, right? The improvement process. So take some time on that once you've picked up on some new details in your surroundings, in your environment, and see what you can do, what good you can do with that. Potentially there's something that's been plaguing the office, a process, a material, a machine, an operation that's been going on for quite some time that you've now discovered a potential solution for, and you could come up with a fix. Thank you for listening to Career Growth Made Easy podcast and closing episode 133, Picking Up Details. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. Please help spread the word by sharing it with friends, family members, and colleagues. We have a lot of free episodes giving great advice and hope that it helps you and others with your career growth journeys on an accelerated path forward. As we get near the end of the year, we have a lot to be thankful for and celebrate. God bless you. I am Craig Ansell, your host, looking forward to talking to you next week. Don't forget to subscribe and share Career Growth Made Easy with others. We're on all the major players, or you can just Google us. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our channel. New episodes every Monday. In the meantime, why don't you follow us on social media, at Craig Ansell, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. To book a coaching appointment, download our free guides, or join our email list, check out the links in the description below.